They present the popular radio program, Political Platform, on the Ray Power FM network. Ray Power FM Political Platform, now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. It's Ray Power Political Platform on AIT Abuja. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Political Platform. My name is Amitya Nakwe. Yesterday, the Senate received the communications from the executive arm of government, from the president to be precise. Uh, that communication is all about a request uh, from the Senate, from the presidency, for the Senate to approve a foreign loan of 5.5 billion U.S. dollars. So many people have been uh, uh, reacting variously uh, to it. Of course, it was uh, sometime in 2006 that Nigeria exited from the Paris Club and London Club huge uh, debt circle with a deal that saw Nigeria pay off 18 billion dollars, while the rest, about 12 billion, uh, was uh, written off in a deal that indeed enable the country to move away from that death trap. But if you take a look at our current debt profile, it's gradually building up. Some people say we need to really borrow as long as we are channeling them to uh, the construction of uh, productive ventures and uh, good infrastructure. We won't have any fear of repayment or going back to a debt trap. But some other Nigerians are still uh, raising eyebrows saying indeed uh, it is the future generation that will bear the brunt of the repayment. The government has named uh, the areas where these uh, funds we go into, and of course, uh, the uh, loan request approval came with a breakdown. Uh, the Northern Nigeria uh, Conference uh, is starting today. It will hold this Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, the objective is to articulate the interests of the North and its position as regards the restructuring of Nigeria. We shall be taking you live to that conference to give you updates. Uja Jaya is uh, with me in the studio this morning. Welcome to the program, our listeners. And also joining her is uh, Ijama Osama. Good morning and welcome. Thank you very much, Amechi. Uh, I am very much particular about um, the Northern Leaders Conference because we want to know the outcome of that conference. We've seen that of the Southwestern Conference. Uh, we, we know the agitation coming from the Southeast. Uh, the, the southerners are already they already have a position and we're waiting for the northerners including to give us the middle belt. yes including the middle belt uh, probably after this conference we'll have to sit in the round table but i've always asked a question what will you like we said yes you said yesterday what will you target what will you target the conference that will have all nigeria's all regions uh, demand are you going to call it another national conference that, some, that, some that's, people are talking <laughs> of a constituent assembly was, was, a constituent it, assembly to prepare a draft constitution. Of course, if you recall, just before the 1979 uh, uh, Second Republic came into being, a constituent assembly uh, made up of uh, uh, those that know political scientists, lawyers, and they put together a draft document which the then uh, military government approved. Some people are also insisting, uh, just like we spoke with the Usman Bugaje, the convener of that conference, he says, okay. uh, after uh, every other nationality may have arrived at a position, a wider round table uh, should be uh, convened, a form of constituent assembly where uh, compromises and indeed uh, uh, agreements could be reached on the way forward. Uh, Amiti, how do you marry that with uh, the president's directive that uh, all the people who are agitating should pass whatever they are doing through their representatives at the National Assembly? And the speaker, uh, Dugara, of course, re-echoing what the president said yesterday, that if there's any is that if there's any move to amend the constitution or tinker with the existing constitution, it must be done uh, with the existing National Assembly as it, it is the only institution recognized by law to carry out that function. So y Yes, but I, I believe that we can make things easy for ourselves because if you're really hard about that, you find that we may just end up going around in circles because the way it is almost everybody is, is, is insisting on their way i think that the national assembly members if truly they i mean okay they are truly the representatives of people and if they want to act as true representatives of the people they should you know give room for 
at least a, a, a little compromise in this regard. It doesn't mean that if the ethnic nationalities sit together and uh, deliberate and come up with resolutions, that the National Assembly cannot now deliberate on those resolutions. But to insist that everything must be initiated by them, I think that even the lopsidedness in representation may not allow that. A Amechi, I still think uh, some members of the National Assembly are also part of these conferences. The one that held in Ibadan, the Ibadan Summit. I know, I know I saw a lot of members of the National Assembly there. And uh, the one that is holding today, the Northern Conference, I am very sure that there are elders in the Senate that will also be part of it. And if they come out with uh, the document, if they uh, agree after the Constituent Assembly, I'm uh, presenting to the- draft. A That's draft. why I still call it a draft. A draft. No matter whatever way we look at it, the it National is. Assembly- Yes, they, they present it to this to same play. National Assembly. Mm -hmm. According to what she said, if they are true representative of the people, they will know that that is what the people well, When we have a, a national consensus, it will be very difficult, pretty difficult for the National Assembly to uh, do otherwise. Well, uh, we saw how they uh, played out uh, the issue of a devolution of powers. Uh, it wasn't uh, guided by reason, and there were talks even within the National Assembly that they may revisit it due to pressures Nigerians are made to bear on them. The Nigerians, they should know that at that point, they should stop. They will stop being politicians but become statesmen. But first, let's get this national consensus, uh, which I believe the uh, National Assembly will not say no to. Let's. You, you, okay. that, 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 that would also depend on how their people are able to get to them and what comes out of each of the regions, yes. each of the zones. Because whatever they decide is what their representatives will go with. And like I said, lopsided representation, I think that is the greatest undoing for now. And if they will, you know, go, uh, uh, mellow on that, then we can get somewhere. Okay, let's hear from you. Uh, let's uh, see uh, some of the mails we have fished out from our email platform. Hello and welcome to the mail segment. I am Usaiti Yari. And I'm Amaka Okoro. Welcome. Beginning from the health sector, Oko Chukuka in Isuizo in the State says, the incidence of monkeypox outbreak reported a few days ago in Biasa State has taken another dimension with the possible spread of the disease to, out to seven other states of the Federation. It's the responsibility of the federal government through the Ministry of Health and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control to ensure that the disease is contained as the government did during the Ebola virus outbreak in the country a few years ago. The federal and state government should use the different media, media tools available to sensitize the citizenry at the grassroots on the precautionary measures to adopt in order to avoid contracting the viral disease. In the same vein, Nigerians should endeavor to play their own part by ensuring that they observe hygienic practices such as regular hand washing with soaps, the use of hand sanitizers, avoid excessive handshakes, and above all, avoid the consumption of monkey meats, to name just a few. May God deliver Nigeria from the, scour the scourge of monkeypox as it did for the country during the Ebola outbreak. And still on health matters, Henry Ewunonu in Abuja says, a few days ago, Mrs. Aisha Buhari confirmed the inexplicable confusion at the Hallowed State House Medical Center, Abuja, in addition to the other occasions when she exposed the inconsistencies within the Buhari's presidency. She spoke for the masses. The unverbalized question on her lip was, if Asso Rock Clinic can decay to this extent that the X-ray machine is not working, what is the state of other public health facilities in Nigeria, including the primary health care center in my village? Is this going to be another wasted opportunity at advocating for a, a revamped health care delivery in Nigeria? God forbid. Nigerians demand explanations now. Over to the saga in the NNPC, Sonda Obas in, in Ibon State says, by hiding under technicalities, the managing director of the NNPC, Bekanti Baru did not answer most of the questions raised by Dr. Ibe Kachiku's leaked memo. He rather ended up indicting President Buhari and exposing his publicized war on corruption as a reliance on the past glory of Tunde Diagbon. Now that Baru has indicted the president, he has to answer the questions raised by the memo, such as lopsided appointments, award of contracts to a company not registered in Nigeria. Why are the refineries in Nigeria not working optimally? Why must Nigeria continue to import refined petrol when she is one of the highest exporters of crude oil in the world, at a time when numerous Nigerians can refine crude oil in their backyard and many other questions begging for answers? To overcome all this, 
the National Assembly should go beyond constituting investigative panels. They should urgently pass the Petroleum Industry Bill, enact laws that will prevent the President from serving as a minister, and they should patriotically carry out their oversight functions. That's it on the main segment today. Continue to send your thoughts and suggestions to political platform at yahoo.com. Bust it! They present the popular radio program Political Platform on the Ray Power FM network. Ray Power FM Political Platform now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. It's Ray Power Political Platform on AIT Abuja. Thank you so much, um, Vice Presidents, uh, Deputy Governors, Ministers of State, spare tires. Of course, they will never be spare tires. Of if you take a look at the position of the Vice President, by way of our Constitution, uh, it is saddled with the responsibility of managing the economy. It is at the head of the Privatization Council. It is at the head of the National Economic Council. Uh, it is actually, by design, a Prime Minister. Uh, if, of course, uh, the president will allow the vice to try, such as we have seen with Muhammad Buhari, who has allowed uh, the vice president, Ushim Bajo, to indeed handle lots of uh, responsibilities. At the state levels, uh, deputy governors, uh, they are more like spare tires, uh, no constitutional provision to indeed assign them any function except as uh, directed or as assigned by the governor. So it's a, a bit different. And some governors do try to empower uh, their deputies by giving them commissionership portfolio. I know some of some deputy governors that also served as minister, uh, commissioners of education or agriculture as a way of empowering the minister of state. Uh, well, uh, no, the minister is the substantive minister is the one with portfolio. The minister of state is without portfolio. But at some point, I think it was during the year ago, I heard that, of course, uh, there was so much fight between ministers and ministers of state prompting the government to separate functions. Okay, Minister of State, uh, these are the prostators that uh, you oversee. Substantive Minister oversee this one. Amechi, I, I don't know if uh, a lot of persons are already saying uh, Kachuku's role is that of the deputy. What happened to the Ministry of Transport where the Minister of State was made Minister of State of Aviation? So they, they, they Giving they, a portfolio. A portfolio. Yes. There's a problem. And where there was There's a, a huge, power puzzle yes. prompting the presidency to, to ask the uh, Minister yes. of State the, to, uh, to, be, yeah, yeah. to oversee, oversee aviation. aviation. So there's a problem with the appointments and how these uh, duties were, were shared. From the moment uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari announced appointment of men, uh, cabinet, cabinet ministers, so I think they have to go and look into it. When it comes to the oil sector, this is a president that has not been around for quite some time. Six, six months, he's not been active. And we, definitely that sector is a working sector. If you have a, a deputy like they call him, you want that man not to do anything and wait for the president. What happens to the Nigerian government? Okay, let's go to the, uh, be, be the law request uh, the executive uh, uh, is asking the Senate to approve. 5.5 billion US dollars, uh, 2.5 billion of that sum is going to be sourced through euro bond and is uh, for uh, the implementation of the 2017 budget, while the 3 billion is to uh, refinance uh, and maturing a uh, domestic debt. So you use uh, a foreign debt to uh, settle domestic debt. Of course, uh, we told you at the beginning of this program of the argument going on in Nigeria about uh, the, of course, uh, uh, the, the necessity for this loan. And we are being joined now by a development economist, uh, Odilin Nwebwara, for his perspectives uh, on this issue. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, uh, my brother. So, a new fresh uh, loan request, uh, how important and significant is it for our economy? I've always uh, been one of those people championing that Nigeria should uh, still be fed further to foreign debt and less to domestic debt. The reasons are obvious. First, foreign debt majority uh, have longer period of time, longer period. And the, the interest uh, rate uh, on uh, uh, foreign loans are very, very minimal. Two, it gives room for, for local investors, or uh, that is small businesses, to borrow domestically, to have more access to, to, the, to the debt market. 
instead of competing with the foreign, instead of competing with the federal government on 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 this war uh, 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 domestic uh, 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 debt market. So uh, we exited from a Paris club and London club that trapped. Uh, more than a decade ago, if you take a look at, at our debt profile, is gradually uh, coming up. In one fell swoop, we are uh, going for 5.5 billion. Uh, are we in in uh, dangers of going back to into another debt trap? No, uh, Mr. Amishi, let's clarify something here. We have to be certain on that fund the economic uh, issues we are discussing here. Look at the Nigerians, uh, look at, I'm going to give you some countries uh, of growth external debt. Egypt is, uh, after 2012, Egypt was 141 billion. Uh, no, Brazil was 141 billion. Egypt was 53 billion. Uh, India was uh, 485 billion. Mexico was 352 billion. Nigeria was 12. 12 billion US dollars. South Africa was 141 billion dollars. That is external debt exposure. So Nigeria, among its peer economies, is the least exposed to foreign debt. We need foreign debt, as I said. What happened in the 1980s? A different way what is happening today. Because when we borrowed in the 1980s, we did not borrow for investment in the critical infrastructure. And also, we borrowed at a floating interest rate, which means we did not know that the interest rate could jump up so, double itself as it did in 1981. So, what I'm saying in essence is that the issue is not whether we need to borrow. It is what are we borrowing this money for. And two, a lot of those people saying we must pay down our domestic debt by a, a, a borrowing externally because it's cheaper. And also, it gives government room to manage because government is spending over a trillion naira every year to just to, for debt or a service obligation, not even to pay the debt. So, I am of the view that we must further borrow externally. But what are we borrowing externally for? Are we borrowing for critical infrastructure? If it's for critical infrastructure, is that critical infrastructure not to reduce cost of doing business in Nigeria so that we can increase the competitiveness of Nigeria uh, uh, doing business? No, so let's go through some of the let, let's go through some of the projects that the government says uh, this uh, loan will go into. The Mambila Hydropower project, very critical one in Taraba State. A second run runway for Nanda Ziki went National Airport. Counterpart funding for the rail projects uh, going on across the country, and of course uh, construction of the Bode Boni uh, Road uh, project. Uh, these uh, infrastructure and projects appear very. Uh, juicy and uh, that have the capacity to uh, affect the economy positively. No, Mr. Mr. Meshi, as we are talking, as we are, when you called me, I told you earlier that we have to prioritize those areas of investment that will have enough return on it on debt to pay back. I don't see the urgency for a second runway. If we are prioritizing, if we are concessioning the the airport. Why are you being the one to build the second uh, 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 runway? I think that's a contradiction here. So, my concern is that the, the we, is this in part of 2018, 2017-2018 budget, or 2018-2019 budget? Because you don't borrow in between the uh, uh, fiscal year. You must have planned it within the fiscal year. So, if this loan is for 2018-2019, because we are now running uh, June to June to June to pay. So if that is the case, there's no problem. But I disagree that the part of the money will be to build a second runway. That let's consider the efforts. Let's look at those those pockets of uh, 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 areas of this country that can in improve the economy of this country. Aba needs good roads. Uh, uh, Lagos needs uh, good roads. Uh, all these areas and uh, 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 this, these are the areas we are going to invest. We are going to invest in agriculture, food processing. These are the areas that we have to hand money to small businesses. But I don't believe that government should borrow money to give a second runway. If you consider the airport, right? if you don't want to consider consultant, okay, let me give it to the private sector to build, and eventually the private sector will be getting the money through. Uh, 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 oh, okay, uh, uh, Mr. Mwebara. Mr. Yes. Mwebara. Uh, government yes. says uh, it, it has recovered a lot of money, you know, the, the looted funds. And uh, the Minister of Finance said uh, part of the money was used for the financing of the 2017 budget. 
Now, can this money also not be used for some of these things that have been enumerated? And doesn't the country deserve to know how much it has been recovered so far? Okay. Here is it. I, I completely agree with you because uh, you cannot have recovered money and they are not making maximum use of them. So, what I'm saying, in essence, and I agree with you, what I'm saying, in essence, government should have by now told the Nigerians how much it has recovered from 2015 today. And so that we agree where to invest the money is. We want to use this money to pay down on our, our domestic debt. And also, if we have to use it to, to, to meet our, our current expenditure obligation, no problem. But what you can see from this external loan is that they're going to use part of it to, for recurrent. They will not say that publicly. They're going to use major part of this money for recurrent. For That's recurrent payment of salaries and overheads. Exactly, because they already listened to Minister of Finance recently. She, she said that government uh, has overemployed people in the agencies and ministries, and they cannot continue to pay the But, but the National so, Assembly is there to monitor and oversight uh, the use of these funds. Anyway, my brother, let's not go there. I'm not trying to invite National Assembly. But if I were National Assembly, I would stop this loan in the first place. I would say this loan must be planned into the 2018-2019 budget. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. Uh, we I must have to I leave it there. Uh, thank you so much, Odile and Webera. Is you have a trained economist, a development economist. Thank you so much for your perspective. Okay, uh, we'll make a further uh, to uh, link uh, the bio boundary uh, on the phone of the bio is as we speak uh, at the Arewa House uh, in Kaduna, where uh, Northern Nigeria uh, is organizing a conference, and in that conference, they hope to indeed articulate their position. Uh, as to what should uh, how how they should approach costs for a restructuring, but of course, when we are there, uh, raising one critical issue about uh, the inclusion of uh, uh, the second uh, runway for Indam Daziki International Airport. But we have Bodhuri on the line now. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Amici. So, what's the situation like there? Well, um, on the surface, um, Kaduna is calm. People are racing to their offices for the day's job. But I can tell you at the venue of the event, um, people are already arriving and it's, uh, it's not being seen as just an ordinary conference. It's a major conference that has to do uh, with the future of this country, particularly how do we live together peacefully? How do we uh, uh, ensure political stability? And how do we ensure that uh, no part of this country it's, uh, it's not carried along in the process of ensuring that whatever political arrangement we want to have, we should be able to do it peacefully and they work towards reaching compromise and consensus. The issues to be discussed are, are very wide, uh, ranging from fiscal federalism to political arrangement for the country to issues of, um, of, uh, of unity. And those are all spread out, and those are the issues that will probably preoccupy the minds of those uh, who are attending the conference uh, from from today and uh, tomorrow. And I can tell you that they are from all the segments of the society in the north, um, the, from, and from all parts of the north, uh, the traditional rulers, the business leaders, the people from the academics, uh, and, and um, political leaders, and all of that are showing their, they are going to show their presence, and they are gradually arriving at the venue of the conference. What do you think is in the air now? I mean, uh, what likely position do you think uh, will be adopted uh, at the end of the day? Well, I think their own appro the approach here look a little bit different. Um, what is being done here is to generate ideas. And I think those ideas will be distilled by uh, another, gr another, another group of people that will be set up who will now uh, be able to harmonize they will harmonize all the views, distill them, and take a position on uh, on what the North is it will be asking for in facilitating the future of Nigeria and a new and a political agreement. And I can tell you that the way the event is being seen is being seen purely as a citizens-driven uh, conference, not uh, the usual one that is likely uh, dominated by uh, true 
government directives and all the rest. And uh, there is no, there, there is, it does seem as if there is no, no, there is, there is no declaration of a no-go area. It's all the issues that are going to be looked into in the next, in this, uh, for the next today and tomorrow. Okay, thank and you. And then sir. after that, after that, what they intend to do is to now work after harmonizing and stealing all the all the ideas that, that have been generated and agree upon it is that they are taking the initiative is going to be taken to reach out to all the other geopolitical zones and interest groups across the country in such a way that uh, all these views can be harmonized and probably either send it to government or find a way of ensuring that um, the the doubt detention and the rising emotion on the issue of restructuring very quickly what are the high profile names personalities we're expecting very quickly well we're expecting uh, governors we're expecting the sultan we're expecting traditional rulers we're expecting scholars from a uh, different uh, academic institutions uh, in the north and um, uh, and the, the, the totality of it is that it's an all embracing thing and what what area that uh, you know the general belief is that there is no more no longer a monolithic north but i think uh, this conference will probably show whether the north is still one or whether the general impression of that the monolithic north died with the creation of this will be, will be, will be either established or re-established okay. because of this conference Th thank you so much uh, but we can't wait to have you back to discuss uh, the outcome of the conference thank you yeah, as likely stated there, uh, the whole not the part of it, including the minorities, let's see indeed whether a consensus uh, will be achieved at the end of the day. Uh, uh, of course, it's a good thing that all the sections are meeting because uh, that's where we are going ultimately if you go by the rising agitation in the land. So I think that it's a step in the right direction, having been kick-started by the Southwest, the South-South and the others. The Southeast too has been meeting and they're still meeting. So it's a good thing, at least from here, let us know where this country is going Good to. enough, a dialogue is on and we hope it continues in search of solutions. That's the end of the program. Let's meet again on Thursday for another edition. Have a great day.